panelists. Saturday morning, law discussions. Yeah. So it, congratulations. We haven't really spoken on air since you you took over as as minister. Yeah. And uh, yeah. a lot of people were happy when you were appointed because they said, oh now you are leaving the side of the CSOs who criticize all the time <laughs> to now go and try and do something. Yeah. How has it been transitioning from CSO advocates to government now implementing? I'm still transitioning. It's been an experience. It's giving me a better perspective of the way things work mm -hmm. and how we can achieve results mm. to make sure that we achieve our objectives for me personally of um, helping poor and vulnerable people. Mm. So, so for me it's been a great experience. I'm sure you were excited when the ministry's name was recalib recalibrated because in the past it was just minister, ministry for gender and women or whatever children. It wasn't really clear. Now they're saying it's gender, children, and social protection. How excited were you at the the, the change in 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 name? Or is it, is it important that the name change? It wasn't excitement. It was more of re reflection on um, what goes into our name change and what it means mm -hmm. for government. Mm -hmm. So it was more reflecting on what our mandate mm -hmm. is or what our mandate should be now that um, we have changed to gender, children and social protection, especially because we had become an amalgam of two existing establishments, that is um, gender social welfare. Mm. So it was more of looking at um, our mandate and how we can deliver mm. on that mandate. So looking at the vehicle, the government vehicle, the appropriate government vehicle and how it should be calibrated mm -hmm. to facilitate um, an effective delivery and then also um, achieving our mandate. So what does social protection mean in this, in, in this context? Social protection basically is the mechanism that we use to ensure that particularly poor and vulnerable people mm -hmm. in very simplistic terms are cushioned from shocks mm. that they would otherwise receive by for instance in our context as a country by we transitioning from lower middle income status to an upper middle income status. We acknowledge the fact that um, uh, poverty, uh, we have poverty, there's poverty in Ghana and that some through, for instance, the withdrawal of fuel subsidies would fall through the, uh, the cracks mm -hmm. in terms of um, becoming poorer or in terms of their socioeconomic status changing. So what sort of interventions do we put in place as a government to ensure that those who unfortunately fall through the cracks are catered for? So then we apply social protection interventions mm. to address some of these situations. To And it's also an equality thing. It's also um, an equality thing that... Um, mm. And it's also to reduce the inequality gap between the haves and have-nots, or the poor and those but who... If you look at the, the whole range of things government tries to do to deal with this, some of them are not within your remit. For example, even the NHIS, and then there's the whole school feeding thing, free school uniforms, capitation grant, and then there's the LEAP, which we'll be talking about. So how do you coordinate social protection when some of the interventions are run by other government institutions? That is our mandate to coordinate social protection. Presently, government is implementing over 25 social protection interventions. Apart from the ones you mentioned, the less depth, mm -hmm. and then um, that's the skills building, GDA, NHIS. We also have something like block farming under Ministry of Agri. And then we have under Ministry of Local Government, the public works, mm -hmm. where during um, lean seasons, employment is sought for uh, certain categories of Ghanaians and they help in road construction, they help in construction of dams and what have you. So that is public work. So there are about 25 or more. Our task is to coordinate all this. Um, 
not necessarily managing because I think mm -hmm. there was a misconception that we were going to manage. At this stage, at this point in time, uh, we do not have the capacity, especially in terms of the human resources, to manage okay. directly school feeding and all that. Mm -hmm. So what we're doing currently is coordinating. Mm -hmm. We have um, a sector working group that is made up of um, development partners, government institutions mm -hmm. who are implementing the various social protection interventions and also civil society. Mm. Then we have an interministerial group to, for this moment, share information, look at uh, strategies and also to start coordinating. Mm. So, so this is what we're doing for this year, for this phase. Mm -hmm. As we progress, we're going to enhance our coordination mandates, and then we can look at managing. Mm. But for now, you are just we are, coordinating, we are just coordinating and, not directly in charge. and not directly in charge in terms of information. So, for instance, in that um, regard, um, I should be talking about our restructuring. Okay. We are restructuring as a ministry. So, um, we are going to have a department of social development instead of the department of social welfare mm -hmm. and that will have two divisions the division for social services which will carry out the traditional social welfare um, uh, services or programs that they've been running since 1946 and I hope you know that is the oldest government department in yes it's the no, oldest. Social welfare. yes social welfare I see and then um, on the other leg we'll have the division for social protection so they will coordinate social protection interventions and so it's under this um, vehicle that we will deliver a mandate in terms of uh, social protection. Do, do we know the extent of need that we are addressing with all these programs? I mean, you alluded to some of the things, fuel prices go up, tariffs increase, VAT goes up, there's a lot of unemployment. Do you have a sense of the level of need of poor people in Ghana? For which you are trying to coordinate all these social interventions to even meet in the first place. Oh, you do? Yes, uh, Mr. Osebe uh, Yes, thank you very much. I think that the ministry is not doing all this in isolation. Mm -hmm. The department who has the mandate for statistics of the nation, who really can tell us who is poor, how many people are poor, and stuff like that, that which is the statistical service is actually the backbone for providing this information for us mm -hmm. so when you go to, for instance to the statistical department they'll be able to tell you that this is the number the size of the population this size of the population this is also the size of the population that fall into the poor categories and their levels of poverty and, you know and we've started dealing especially with leave for the 20 percent who fall under the lowest the lowest part of the poverty line Mm. Yeah. So the if, if, if I can add yes, to that, right. so for instance, in terms of moving on, government is setting up the national targeting unit. Okay. Um, the World Bank has graciously offered us uh, two million dollars, mm. and under the Ministry of Gender, Children, and Social Protection, we're creating a database mm. where we profile. We have the socio-economic uh, profiles mm -hmm. of poor people. Mm. Um, like uh, Bediako, Mr. Bediako said, um, the statistical service can tell you, can give you a poverty rate for each district. Mm -hmm. So, for instance, I can tell you the poverty rate for Teshi is 13%, mm -hmm. that for certain districts in the north is 78%. Um, and so, even in determining which districts we should provide LEAP services, we use this data. We look at the poverty, the levels of poverty and that informs us we look at uh, NHIS uptake mm -hmm. so we use some of these indices but this targeting office is going to be very critical for us as a country so when we go move into a district and we want to provide social uh, protection and um, programs or intervention we can tell we've profiled that district and we can tell how many poor people there are how many female males and what the social economic Mm. circumstances are. Mm. We're replicating a Pakistani model, the Benizia Bhutto uh, Income Support Program, where mm -hmm. the World Bank also helped them to uh, have this uh, profile. 
and also the Bosa Familia in Brazil. Mm -hmm. So this is what we want to do. We believe that if we are able to create this database, mm -hmm. it would help us in, in terms of value for money, but basically optimize government resources in determining who should receive social protection in a district. What definition of poverty are you using then? Because you said, for example, poverty test is 13%, and I'm sure for parts of the northern region is over 70 I, I mean, I don't want to get too philosophical because I've had many definitions, but one I like most is that poverty is not just an absence of resources or money, but the, the absence of hope in some instance. But you are a ministry. You have tangible and deliverables. What mindset are you approaching poverty? When you say you are helping poor people, who are you talking about? Okay, for instance, we can use LEAP in terms of um, determining mm -hmm. who a poor person is Good. and who should receive LEAP. We look at your living, the living circumstances mm -hmm. in God, I mean, in, in the community. Mm -hmm. We, for instance, look at um, the number of children and the existence, whether you, they are persons with disability. We are looking at the household and not at individuals. We look also at um, um, severe disability and then number of aged persons. The statistical service has. Uh, its own way of determining uh, poverty, who is poor, who yeah. is poor and, and that so you're working with the statistical service definition. We're, we're working with the statistical service definition, mm -hmm. but for us, particularly for LEAP, because that is what we do as a ministry, this is what this is a criteria. Mm -hmm. uh, we have a whole questionnaire that we administer, mm -hmm. so we look at the type of the house, we look at living, con we ask several questions. For instance, if you have children, you depend on but who can afford to look after you, that would be a factor in determining whether you qualify for LEAP or not. Mm. What we use, apply, is what we call a common targeting mechanism mm -hmm. because we don't want people to be subjective in determining who should qualify for LEAP. So um, we have piloted um, this mechanism in 10 districts, which is um, run at the district level. We also involve the local government a lot at the district level. So this is administered and that helps us to determine um, who I don't know whether Mr. Bedea Cook can talk yeah. about common targeting. Yes, yeah. I, I think in, in addition to that, what I can just say is that it is a system, a mechanism that is working. And we want people to understand that it is not, for instance, by human instincts that one selects one person or the other. Not arbitrary. No. There's a scientific way of determining who is poor. Exactly. Because after even the statistical service has supported you to show you the regions of poverty and you go in there to the districts where the districts even show you the communities where poverty are, like mm -hmm. Minister just said, we administer the proxy means test questionnaire. Okay. This proxy means test questionnaire are the kinds of questions that have been tailored in the way to tease out Okay. To get a sense of what kind of support one gets, mm. uh, what kind of things that how the person lives, the living condition and all that, even in those poor communities that are targeted that we go into. And this is then fed into the, um, the CTM, that is the Common Targeting Mechanism System database. And because there are weights, there are weights placed on all these questions in the system, the system does what we call ranking. And based on what answers are given to all the individual questions therein, then the system is able to produce and come out that, okay, these are the real people who will need support. So it is not as if immediately you, you I mean, we, we take your input and we put on the system, you automatically get the support. So you, you go to scientific lens to make sure that the person benefiting is actually indigent. The exactly. person is poor. Exactly. By all the, the basic definitions. Exactly. So, but Bernard, mm -hmm. what we cannot we have not been able to manage to do is to ensure that the same person we have targeted and, are, and we are given leave is not benefiting from other social protection programs. Mm -hmm. Because at the district we also have less debt running, we may have the block farming, we have public works, we have the common fund. So now this is our task. As they may even be benefiting from capitation grant for their children. Yes. They may have school uniform and free as well. Uniform. So this is our task now. How do we target and how do we coordinate? How do we share information to make sure that we are not duplicating and replicating so but that if, if, one if, if person is very receiving... Complicated, I don't want to make it sound, but you, you are, you've, 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 you, because there are so many programs going on with different funding regimes for different purposes. And here you are as a ministry 
with a name for social protection. There are going to be tough wars because eventually you would have to manage or at least be sure of what goes into school feeding. You will have to know what happens in capitation grant. How sure are you that you're not going to face resistance from those who manage it presently because they may be benefiting in a certain way? Less them may have to come under you as you are running leap now. It's no mean a task in the way you describe it. You are going to, yes, coordinate and eventually manage. It's, it's very complicated, it seems to me, from the way you've explained it. It is not complicated. It is government that came up, the president that came up and said, this is what we need to do to be able to address concerns, uh, to be able to reduce poverty in Ghana, mm. to be able to narrow the inequality gap in Ghana. So this was a, a president, this was something that President Mahama actually undertook, because he was the one that ensured that we had the executive instrument to create this ministry and also to have social protection. And also he gave, I mean, the president and government gave us this mandate of coordinating social protection interventions mm. and this is, is a process okay it's a process we start from somewhere mm. and we started very well in terms of the inter-ministerial group in terms of a sector working group and also in terms of uh, playing a coordination and then in terms of creating a national targeting unit mm. so that all the social protection programs being run in Ghana would collect the data in terms of who should qualify from their programs from one data base which we are creating which is being worked on now yes we're we're now in the initial so stages. let's talk about leap and what is how we've had leap for a while now and it's something you inherited what is the purpose of leap well the purpose of leap has just come to address the same um, problem that minister just reiterated because if you look at the initial poverty, um, you know, strategies that were put in place to bring people out of poverty, like trying to give out soft loans so to poor people, to work with them and then to pay and things like that. It did not take into consideration what the real home situations were. So, for instance, if you give people loans to pay back so you can, you know, turn it around and give it to other people when they have real needs in their home. When they have children who are hungry in the home, they can feed. When they have sick children in the home, they can take to the hospital. I'm sorry, but you're going to use the same money to make sure that those things are dealt with. So after the, um, the, the, those reforms, it became very critical. Mm -hmm. To make sure that you solve first the home problem, mm -hmm. and after you have dealt with the home problem and saved them from the shocks, then when you give them some support to go out there and work, you are sure they're going to work with the money and bring your returns. So LEAP is actually to cushion that kind of bad situation, make sure that they have at least two or three square so meals these are a day. grants. Yes. They are grants. Free grants. money to sort yourself out before yeah. we can even start talking about yes. starting a loan yeah. business or whatever exactly yeah. or yeah. else when you straight away go take a loan um looking at your condition it yeah. might be difficult so what is the coverage to... of leap how many districts how many people or families benefit 99 from leap? districts 99, 99 districts 99 districts are 74,000 households 74,000 74, households and um is it 80 or 90 we give mostly to the female heads of the household. Mm. We give like, um, I, I'll just try and get the figure. It's about, yeah. I think about 80 or 90 percent because that's um, very important. And so it's just to cater for the basic needs, like baby I could say. Mm. Food, shelter, clothing, mm -hmm. but basically, and health. And we have conditionalities. So once you're on leap, you have to ensure that your children, you enroll your children in school, they attend school, and then also um, you NHIS. They get the NHIS, they get the NHIS automatic for NHIS mm -hmm. registration, and then um, the young ones get the immunization. But I'm, I, I have been told that despite the nice numbers you mentioned about the uh, 99 districts and uh, is this 74,000 families, it is only 10% of the very poor who benefit from LEAP. Yes. This information we have from the UNICEF yes. research. Yes. So one, only one in 10 extremely poor people benefit from LEAP. Okay. Why? Well, it's, I think that uh, to add to that, um, it's a process and we are progressing from where we started. We started with, first with 21 districts in okay. 2008 mm -hmm. and like Minister just said, we are now 
uh, paying 74,347 households, mm. uh, which brings into, uh, you know, a total beneficiaries, individuals of 223,041 individuals who are benefiting from the program. So we, we have a target, for instance, this year we are hoping to reach 100,000. We have a target set for next year, and the coverage will keep on going on. But I must be quick to add that in all the social interventions being run, a survey done by the World Bank came out to prove that it is this program that was best at targeting the poor people, and therefore the impact thereof was greater because it was given to those so it, it, compared to say fewer subsidies or say even school uniforms and school fees being paid for people this was the most well targeted of all the poverty interventions yeah, yes that was the world bank that is what Undoubtedly. The yes that is the word so the meaning that program. we have been able to target and reach the poor people i mean i was mm -hmm. uh I, I was with a group in uh, volta region and we had to cross, you know, water bodies and all that, and actually go to the communities. And even, uh, for example, other communities, we have the communities also involved. We have CLIC. We have uh, members of the communities, and they mobilize mm. the beneficiaries. And when the monies are being paid, there's also an opportunity to sensitize and educate the community about national health insurance or about some health so that you can bring other yes. interventions. But do you have specific things you tell the families to do with the money? Do you prescribe? I mean, I can imagine a man who's irresponsible, whose wife goes for the money, and he, all he wants to do is to drink. So how are you going to make sure that, yes, the woman gets the money, but the money doesn't get spent on Akwetesi yeah. by the, the very irresponsible man who's married to her? To her? Yes. Um, answer this. I think that comes with the strong education that comes with all the payment cycles that happen. Um, like Minister just reiterated, we ensure that most of the time it is given to the female-headed households, and because mm -hmm. we know the culture dynamics the in this females place, in the, the, household. the females in the in the household. So not female-headed households, no, but fem females the females in the households, the households okay. because um, it is they who actually prepare food. Mm -hmm. You know, mostly in the house, and because we want to ensure that it also solve the other problems that we have. You know, malnutrition in the household, casual call, and all that, so the government saves money at the at the side of health in dealing with these issues. Mm -hmm. So we ensure, like we said, it is uh, we have um, 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 we tell them what we expect of them that if you were so you educate them, them, we educate them with the, we use the, the money forum. Comes. Yes, we have a forum anytime we're doing the payment, and we use that forum to address health issues of the communities. Mm. Uh, school, so don't just give the money exactly now. How much do you give them, and what's the method which I'll come to? How much, on average, does a family get or a household get? Yes, yeah. um, twenty-four Ghana yeah. uh, per, per month. Per we, month, okay. There's a criteria, so it depends on the number of um, beneficiaries. So, for instance, if you have children who are aged um, the below five, mm -hmm. and then if you have Old people age above 65, and then severely disabled persons within the household. So that means that's like uh, three. Mm -hmm. So you get 24 Ghana. Some would get so for two months it's 48. Okay. And so if you have three, then you just uh, okay. Multiply. So if, for example, you have kids below three years old and you have two old men in the house mm -hmm. plus a severely disabled, you may get more than somebody who is just a simple woman without any resources. Exactly. To 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 shed more light on it. If you were just one beneficiary in a household, like Minister said, you get 24 Ghana cities. But because we don't pay on a monthly basis, by, by a monthly basis, it means you're getting 48 Ghana cities. But on the basis of monthly, if you are one beneficiary in a household, you get 24 Ghana cities. If you are two beneficiaries, you get 30 Ghana cities a month. If you are three beneficiaries, you get 36 Ghana cities a month. And if you are four or more, you get 45 Ghana cities a month. But because and you pay it every two months. Every two months. So if you are four in the household, it means you're getting 90 Ghana cities. But we heard that sometimes the monies have not come on time. So maybe the money delays by six months. So and again, the person then goes into debt. So the woman doesn't have money to feed her kids. She's going to borrow from some neighborhood Shylock. So you give them even the 84 cities after the period. And she has to use that to just go pay a debt. Then that defeats the whole purpose of the leap. That is a challenge that uh, we acknowledge. It is a challenge that we are working hard at as a government and trying to address. Um, this We are making payments next week, starting from the 2nd. 
yeah. and that will be the third. Mm -hmm. That will be the third for this year, and that will clear eight months okay. um, of arrears. The first one was to clear arrears of last year, mm -hmm. and then the second was to clear four months for this year. And this is to clear four months. So we do you are, you acknowledge accept that, that the, the, we accept I, that we have a, a, a challenge because mm -hmm. um, a successful uh, cash grant program mm -hmm. is uh, if we are not able to pay regularly, then we will have a problem with ensuring that the impact and the purpose for which mm -hmm. we, we we want to pay mm -hmm. and help the poor is fulfilled. Let's talk about the mood you were using uh, in the past i understand people go to post offices and they go and queue for the money is that what you in is that is that correct and no, then that, that that is not correct we have payment points okay so in the communities we have payment points the ministry has retained the services of ghana post mm. so they are the service providers okay and they work with um social welfare officers at the district and the voluntary committee which we call click so they help to mobilize and uh, bediaco will tell us the number of payment points but it's all aggregated so it's not a post office issue it's not a, because maybe because post office are the service told. so post office actually go to the community oh okay. and so in the morning they assemble and then the money is given out they we have a register so it's like voting so you have a, a photo album. There's a register, and the name is to called out. To identify the person. To identify the person. And the queue. And then they So queue. what do you call Mr. Bernard Avila? Oh, Wamba, he's not present. Is that the end, or they will no, look for me? No, it's not the end. No, they will not look for. That's why we do the mobilizing. They will not look for you. You, you, you can receive your money at the next. Okay. Um, at the next payment. Okay. So they have an ID card. Mm. Uh, we have given them an ID card. So uh, a, a photo ID. So mm. we have. There's a photo album. They check. Mm -hmm. And then the money is given to in them. cash, just in given cash. to their hand. Okay. Yes. Uh, I, 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 I mean, I've, my mind is going all over the place. Isn't there a way in which you can help solve? Because most people don't even have bank accounts. Mm. Okay. So wouldn't it be nice to have some account for which you send the money in that they can go and cash, or it's too long and too complicated? Because giving somebody physical cash, I mean, we want to encourage. Banking. One of the one of the dimensions of poverty is also lack of access to financial services. So if a poor person simply doesn't have a bank account, I mean, not with the big banks or the silos necessarily, but at least get them some electronic record of their money. Or is that possible? Is that something you want to do? Bernard, we're going to very hard to reach, and it's like I told you, I was with a group. We went to the Volta region. We went to. We had to cross um, water bodies and what I so in those areas we don't have banks or we don't have even the rural bank or the branches so mm -hmm. that is the challenge and if you insist on a bank then you're going to increase the costs because, the because bank will our, also task, our task is to as much as possible minimize the even the cost of the the households and the beneficiaries collecting the money because mm -hmm. if you say it should be paid in a bank or a post office that means she'll have to board a trotter go to or the taxi bank or a canoe and then go to the bank and then come back and that's about maybe four ghana cities of, of the, the money. money so we go what about mobile money all so these that's what hotel we money mobile yeah. money tibo cash and all these things is it can't you yeah, yeah can't you use existing platforms well to th thank you very much um um to clarify a point before I answer this particular question, mm -hmm. that is part of the design of the program, because of the categories of people that are the target group, mm -hmm. to ensure that they do not walk beyond some particular kilometers before they get to reach their money. So there is pay points established in every community that you can walk right away from your home, mm -hmm. just walk to under some tree where we have a pay point mm -hmm. and take your money because you shouldn't incur cost in the process Good. of getting your money. And also, we are dealing with people who are very old people, people above 65, some very old, some sick, and you are talking about disabled people and things like that. So, you don't bring the issues of mobility, you mm. know, and, and things like that. So, it's um, being considered. But to ask whether we could use any form, I think that is what we are starting to do mm -hmm. from this particular payment. Uh, government has supported the program to uh, look out for how 
platforms, electronic platforms can be used to deliver this car. Okay. Dealing with, you know, the long processes that we go through mm -hmm. before the cash gets to these people. And so this particular payment is piloting some electronic payment and we have three organizations who are helping us do that. We have MTN mm -hmm. who have designed a very innovative way of making sure that these beneficiaries receive their cash home just by a click of a button by giving them some mobile phones and i know the question that immediately pops about how is an old lady 95 year old lady going to oh, use a mobile phone yeah, yeah, as for mobile phone they are, you, you know, know. Yeah, you know <laughs> but um i want to let you know that all these electronic platforms that have taken into consideration the fact that most of those people are not even educated mm -hmm. so how are these systems going to how is it going to be easy for them to access funding so we have mtn we have aya technologies and we have gips E-Switch. Yeah, that oh, is E-Switch. Yeah, yeah, E-Switch. Yes, E-Switch. Uh, uh, who have all designed very good, you know, electronic payment methods that we are using to pay parts of the beneficiaries this time around. So, so not all of them will go and queue under trees. You are going to transfer the money to their phone and they can use it, like go to an, a cash point and, and recover it. Exactly so. Well, exactly. But this is on a pilot basis. Yes. Wow. In, in, uh, in nine districts and seven regions. Okay. So for instance, for... Um, Accra, uh, for Accra, Greater Accra is in Gasouth. Okay. We're we're we piloting in Gasouth, um, and then all, in all the way up in Zuma Keta. East, and then also Keta. Mm -hmm. uh, for the middle belt, too, we are going to Asante Akim. So you've chosen specific districts for this pilot yes. of the mm -hmm. e cash transfer. Yeah. Okay. And um, let, let's talk a bit of some of the things. So, uh, if what if somebody loses their phone or pin or all those things? Do you how, what kind of education goes into getting making sure they don't uh, lose the money? I mean, last week MTN apologized because our credit was lost, mm. which is a fact, and it came back. So, I'm not too sure. Just asking, do you have you understood the whole chain of how this works and how they can get their money back? Well, some of these questions have been asked when they presented how these pilots are going to be carried out. Mm. And um, they have built in the system mechanisms to ensure that the final beneficiary does not lose his or her money. So, um, well, it's good that it's a pilot. We are hoping to learn from what happens. We're mm. going to have this pilot at least take place three consecutive pay in three consecutive payments mm -hmm. that will we'll learn what happens in the processes and we we'll see whether there are any loopholes that can right. be worked what are the full list of your districts that you mentioned i think there are 70 something districts or that's 90. 90 but uh, do you have you do you cater for the urban poor uh because yes. it's a yes, rising we do. Um, we do. so we have ga um we work great in ga ak Akra municipal James town choco okay. okay all that area we cover we cover a shaman. Yeah. Okay. We also cover a shaman, and then some other areas in Greater Accra. From so you, you cater for the urban poor. Yes, you do cater for the urban poor. All right. I mean, not um, we we are pro we are going to expand. But you are most. Yes. But I, I can say that you are more established in rural poor places. We are we are out of is it two hundred and. Okay, give me a, I'm asking this because the, the four poorest regions in Ghana, mm. northern, upper east, upper west, and central. Yeah. That's what we know. Sure. Is is does Lip take cognizance of that? Sure. Yes. Yeah. Sure. We have heavy presence in those areas because the indicators show, like I said, that these are the poor regions. You have more communities who are poor communities within those districts and those regions. Mm. And I'm also must be quick to um, add that these districts that have been selected to pilot the e payments. Uh, both a combination of the very poor communities where you have problem with even networks and uh, suburban areas and urban areas so it doesn't you know look as if that you can only do it in urban areas so some of the technologies have taken into consideration the fact that you may not even have connectivities okay. in some of the villages it's yeah. three minutes tonight we're talking to minister for gender women and gender children, children and social, social protection. protection i know you Lita, and she's here with uh, uh, one of uh, her assistants, you can say the guy in charge of the uh, the lead program or the finance side finance. of the lead program. Finance. Yes, yes. Emmanuel so Sebedi Akon. We want you to send us your questions, and indeed we have received questions from the public, which we'll be asking you to answer. But um, Inshira has a few questions which have not nothing to do with lead, but still with the yeah, ministry. It's it's I, I'm very interested in the social protection side of of ministry, and uh, one of the things that 
something we every day we pick up the newspapers to review we find stories of Basel abuse Basel murders um, what is the ministry doing in terms of helping to curb if not manage the spit or the rising spit. In fact, to add to that, we heard yesterday you said to me that there was over 5,000 reports of sexual assault. Yeah, 5,000. In Accra. We are talking only Accra. In Accra alone. Accra alone. 10,300. And 10,000 in the. Oh, oh, you also know. Okay. Yes, 10,000. So that's the question. Uh, just a little over 10,000. Right. Yes. Um, we are working to address this issue, particularly to reduce the prevalence of gender-based violence. Mm -hmm. That's what we're looking at. The first thing, baseline, what do we have in terms of statistics? Mm -hmm. So that is the first intervention we've addressed. Thankfully, this year we've applied to development partners for funding to include domestic violence as a module in the demographic and health survey. Uh, thankfully, the World Bank has um, has agreed to support us. So now when we have a demographic and health survey of Ghana, you would have statistics, national, regional, district, commit statistics on domestic gender-based violence. That is going to help a lot. And that is like at the, in, in, the, in the long term. Now in terms of specific uh, programs, for this year, for our 16 days, we have started, we've initiated a program to involve men and boys. Because here again, when you look at the data from um, the uh, Domestic Violence and Victim Support Unit of the Ghana Police Service, and let me commend the Ghana Police Service for being able to give us data over 10 years, you can tell that the a likely perpetrator, who is likely to engage in sexual assault, a man in Ghana, who is likely to be a victim of sexual assault, a woman or a girl. So in terms of targeting um, our interventions, we've realized that there's a need to involve men and boys in our programs because they are likely to perpetrate gender-based violence. So we're doing that. We are also working, we have a plan of action. We are also working on harmful traditional practices. So if you learned we are we together with Action Aid and the network on um, persons working on witchcraft in um, in the northern regions. We have a plan of working to eradicate witchcraft. So that's with harmful traditional practices. And then child marriage is also an issue for us in Ghana. And this dimensions for uh, poverty, for reproductive health abuse, and whatever. So that's also something we're going to start working on um, next week. But in terms of the everyday reports, coming to the practicals, you read the papers, everyday reports, we are engaging with the Ghana Police Service that there's a need for us to also improve forensics and then also for us to scale up preventive programs mm. because we need to be able to prevent and then even when it occurs to act on it. So these are some of the, the initiatives that we are looking at in terms of addressing gender-based violence. Yeah, under the, I think there's a provision in the Social Protection Act uh, for shelters for people who are abused, uh, people who uh, don't have anywhere to live and things like that. And, um, you know, to date, uh, I'm yet to know of a shelter that is being run or set up by uh, government's direct intervention. Uh, where are we going with that? Yes, um, it's work in progress. We have three shelters in three geographical locations in Ghana. We cannot disclose for obvious uh, purposes. Uh, we are at a stage where we're engaging with some civil society uh, groups because they have expertise and they have um, run um, shelters um, to be able to, uh, for them to help us run these shelters and also to engage, I mean, to also have our social welfare. Our challenge now is uh, financing, the funding um, to operationalize. Uh, we also have one, um, a fourth one, which we want to use as um, a center for trafficked persons. Uh, 
um, we've also engaged with another civil society group that has expertise uh, to have this center so that we we train and help to reintegrate traffic persons, especially traffic children, uh, for them to reunite with their families. So this is also work in progress, but has basically been hampered due to uh, funding. <laughs> the usual suspect is lack, of, is money. lack of money. That's right. Now, the, for me, the, the, just another uh, two quick questions. Um, children. Um, being exposed to toxic materials, and particularly uh, per recent um, information we gathered at Mubloshi, the old Fanama area is, is one of the There's most notorious. For, like, you, you see women like working with their children behind them in a polluted environment. So they even leave their kids coming in whilst they are doing all kinds of things in that specific locality. The, the so called old Fanama. I don't know if you've your your ministry has taken any special interest in that place. It, it has a lot and, of and children. And others like it across the country. I, exactly. What what are you what 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 you thinking about about that place? Well, our, the, our thinking is more directed at the whole Kaya situation and how to address the Kaya situation. Our department of children is. And we have actually, uh, we have the first, the second, the, uh, we have a comprehensive child protection policy, which will address some of these um, issues. It's not an issue that we that we have engaged with extensively. The specific issue of children and exposure to toxic um, material. What we have done at the level, at the higher level, is to have a child protection policy that addresses um, these issues at the higher level. And we are hoping that the implementation of this child protection policy will will, uh, will help. But now that you have drawn my attention to it, we will get um, a social welfare district officer and the Domestic violence and support. All right. Let's read a few comments for you. Uh, listeners have sent in questions of all kinds and we'll wrap, run through quickly before you go. The text line is 0549989996 and also our Twitter handle is at CT973. Our guest is Nana Oye Letha. Uh, this one is coming from Selom. He says, Ben, kindly ask for me what the ministry's definition for indigent is. Uh, that question is going to you. I'm sure, Emmanuel, you are, you are doing the numbers. Ask what the your definition for indigent is. Uh, another one come through. Millions of girls and women being harassed or abused sexually, especially in office situations. What concrete steps are being taken to create a law that can be used to prosecute offenders? Okay, so be thinking about that question as well. Another one says, national identification card seems to be the best way to record and identify the poor. What is the ministry doing about identification? So these are three heavyweight questions that I want you to deal with whilst we go through. Uh, Bena, please ask Nano if the social protection relief for the poor include providing them with housing support. If not, why is housing excluded? That's from Park C. Bena, please ask them if the program LEAP covers Ada in the Greater Accra because it's on is one of the poor districts from Gideon Tete, uh, presumably from Ada. But I want to know the success achieved so far by the Gender Responsive Skills and Community Project that was launched to protect gender equality and enhance social economic development. So let me stop you. The questions are becoming plenty. Yeah. Uh, so let me just uh, backtrack a bit. Somebody wants to know the definition of the indigent or poor. Somebody wants to know what you're doing about sexual harassment in the workplace and whether you are coming up with any laws to prosecute sin. Somebody wants to know about national identification and how that can help the poor people. And then whether there's housing support under the league, and then uh, covered by league, and then the GSPCDP. So I'm sure you share the questions. Um, yeah. So uh, okay, let me let me start um, on sexual harassment. Yes, we have a law. We have the dom domestic violence, mm. and, and that defines sexual harassment, and then um, there can be uh, prosecution. 
I think uh, what we need to do is to make it more practical, just because of the nature that the person who harasses is likely to be and this uh, this guy is not here <laughs> is likely to be a boss or somebody in um, a senior position, uh -huh. and then the the victim is likely to be um, uh, you know somebody in a in a less in a mm -hmm. position. So it's difficult to report because of fear that you lose your job. Mm -hmm. So then we have to assist. Mm -hmm. And um, I believe we will need to work with the uh, GI Guy Investment and also with the Employers Association mm -hmm. and the employers and also with TUC. I know there have been some interventions, but to make corporate bodies more responsible. Mm -hmm get them to adopt uh, sexual harassment policies and proactively ensure that there are reports. Because I know it's, it, the, the level is very worrying, especially now that uh, people want employment. They do anything to get into a job. And we need to protect them because they become vulnerable. And so, th for me, this is the way we need to go. Uh, self-regulation in terms of do you have a sexual harassment policy in City FM? I, I don't I, I, I don't know. Yes. <laughs> yeah. We have a, a whole fast so document asking, which which, which yes. has um so these are things. Do you have City FM? You mm -hmm. should have a sexual harassment policy. Separate from a code of conduct for workers. Separate from Ex a code of exclusively conduct. on sexual harassment. Exclusively on sexual harassment. Mm -hmm. uh, because I remember data a decade ago, I talked about 60% mm -hmm. of those interviews said they had been sexually mm -hmm. harassed. And I'm sure if you open your phone lines, people are going a lot oh, of Oh, we've done all kinds yes. of programs. I'm so I think this is the way. I know University of Ghana have done that, and um, it's it's working. Then in terms of housing, housing is not included, unfortunately. We are, we are looking at the basics. Mm -hmm. Food for now, food sh shelter and, and clothing. Mm -hmm. um, so housing is not. Ada is coming. Ada, Ada is coming. Ada is coming. 